Welcome to Cocktail Party Massacre. I'm your host, Brock. And I'm your co-host, Pickens. And today we are joined by uh, Michelle, and uh, she has chosen to talk about one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and I believe one of Pickens is that definitely it? one of my like def- like top five for sure. In our, top three, yeah. In our first in our first episode ever, we kind of talked about our favorite thises and thats, and we both agreed that our favorite uh, horror villain of all time is uh, Freddy Krueger. One, two, three, four. Yeah, um, known in the first movie mostly as Fred Krueger, which kind of sounds weird to the ears. I don't know. Um, but, uh, so, without further ado, uh, Michelle, welcome to Cocktail Party Massacre. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Uh, we are glad that you accepted our invitation to this uh, cocktail party, and uh, we want to know more about you. Now, I know that you have uh, a fabulous podcast with your co-host Dave, right? Um, yes. And uh, tell us more about that. Our podcast is called Syndicated Nightmares, and it's dedicated to talking about each episode of Freddy's Nightmares. That was a TV show in the late 1980s. And it's kind of in this um, Tales from the Crypt setup where Freddy introduces the episode and then it just takes off from there. And uh, yeah, so we watch it and talk about it, give our our insight on it, and that's that. And I have to say that uh, I am really nervous about how our trivia game against you is going to go down, because in listening to your podcast, I know that you are a ride-or-die Freddy freak. At least that's what I I sense. Um, It's really impressive because... I, I, I think your love for Freddy Krueger is so deep that you're able to talk about uh, Freddy's Nightmares, which has little to nothing to do with Freddy, with the exception of the first uh, episode, um, mm-hmm. it, other than he's hosting the show. But you know so much about that, too. So it's like your expertise extends you're extra, into that. You're extra intense. Like, yeah. <laughs> She's extra. I've, I've watched, I had to watch, I've been watching the movie, like, almost daily just to be like, I'm going to get oh. it. I'm going to get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you might have a one up on me then because I haven't watched it in about four years. Oh wow! So, so yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see how much so I don't remember. See. Well, um, so tell me more about your. H- how did you come across Freddy, or or what was your first exposure to the movies, and how did you get so interested in it? First of all, um, I, I'm sorry, aren't you, are you from Ohio or? I am. Okay, all right, go ahead. I'm sorry, yeah. I had to cut you off. No, 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 it's fine. Um, well, it started when I was uh, very young, probably around seven years old, and um, I think it was Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. It was on TV, and I watched it and didn't really like it. I thought that it was dumb. And uh, Same, same. Yeah, okay, good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My co-host loves Freddy's for Nightmare 2, so it's yeah. nice to <laughs> talk to someone who doesn't care for I, it. I, 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 I appreciate it more now than I did, but I watched it, and I so this is like pre, this is pre-gay Pickens. I reviewed it <laughs> on Facebook in sixth grade, and I was just like, huh, Freddy Krueger just goes and kills shirtless macho men. Gay, <laughs> gay, gay. Thought it was the worst movie ever. Okay. But now I appreciate it on a camp level. But yes, it's not. It's not nearly the best one. Well, yeah. I'm I'm kindred spirits with Dave then because I really do like Freddy's Revenge. Um, I mean, I like it for a different reason, um, and we can get into the entire franchise a bit later. But so yeah. we watched it. Yeah, yeah. But but go ahead and uh, continue talking about your 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 experience. Oh, sure. So um, my sister wanted to watch Nightmare 3, and we rented that, and I just absolutely fell in love with the character Nancy Thompson. And I hadn't watched the original yet, so I went back to the video store, and I got Nightmare 1, and it just took off from there. I just I loved Nancy Thompson's journey and what she was going through and just could really re- relate to her struggle. And, um, yeah, just absolutely fell in love with the whole series after that. I think in terms of Final Girls, mm, Nancy she's definitely is one of the best such ones. a strong Final Girl, and for for various reasons, oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, well, if you think mm-hmm. about if you think about other horror movies, slasher movies specifically that were out at the time, a lot of Final Girls seemed to me to be Final Girls just out of 
uh, coincidence, coincidence or, almost. Yeah, they just like they like pieced out for a little it bit. Just, they, it like, it just were worked into... out to their favor without yeah. their really taking a lot of initiative. To, but Nancy to definitely did. She like read the book. She like she got prepared. Yeah. She prepared. Yeah, yeah. She home alone his ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I know. I know a lot of people don't really want to consider Laurie Strode from the original Halloween a final girl because she just ran around and screamed and by luck she she survived um but it was actually nancy who was the first one who did all the research and you know looked up how to how to survive and that kind of started the whole final girl trope of you know in in horror films so yeah yeah, i think it's the very first one yeah yeah i mean I agree. And when did when did uh, a Friday the Thirteenth Part Two come out? Eighty one. Eighty one. So you could argue yeah. that she also had kind of a strategy at the very end. But I think that Nancy's involvement, she actually had a plan, a strategy. She fought back. She yeah. was very brave. And she, Alice, is more just like on the whim, just like a barricade myself, barricade myself and yeah. pretend to be his mom. Nancy yeah. like had full on booby traps, which yeah. I am a slut for booby traps. <laughs> <laughs> So how did you meet? How did you meet your co-host Dave? Tell us more about that. Well, it was in uh, the late '90s. I think it was in it was in '96, and um, when AOL and the internet first came out, mm-hmm. he he found me because he was searching AOL profiles that had Nightmare on Elm Street in it. Ooh. And in my in my hobbies, I had Nightmare on Elm Street in there. So he messaged me and was like, "Hey, I'm a big Nightmare fan too." And uh, it turned out we lived like two hours away from each other. And we just started talking on AOL Instant Messenger at the time. And yeah, we would just talk about all things uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and horror. And it was it was really nice for both of us because our group of friends weren't into horror that mm-hmm. much. So we kind of like really, really led to, to one another. And um, yeah, and it just our friendship developed from there. It's very interesting how horror can do that for people mm-hmm. because you know Pickens and I that's we we that's met bonding simply factor. because we recognized that each other yeah. really liked horror movies. Our profile said horror movies and I think that was like one of our first questions we asked each other like what are our favorite horror movies and then like when we saw each other's list I like when you said your list I was like okay he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah it's it's interesting how horror brings people together because it, it is for many people although it's getting uh, increasingly popular it's almost totally mainstream now but but uh, back it, in the day, it was kind of a niche thing, a very genre thing, mm-hmm. and, and few people were as obsessed uh, about it as the three of us are, I feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But So would you say that the first one is your favorite or on the uh, in the franchise? Nightmare 3 is my favorite. That one is a really good one. It, I always go back and forth between 1 and 3 on like, which one is my favorite. Mm-hmm. I, I love psychology, and I think that's probably why it's my favorite, mm-hmm. because because she's pretty much a dream psychologist. And so that really piqued my interest into into studying psychology and sociology. What a way to like come back from a trauma like that. Just like, you know what? I almost got murdered in my dreams. So I'm going <laughs> to study this stuff, and I'm going to become like a psychologist. That's why she's just so great. I love her. Well, yeah. I also like it when people fight back and when people have like special skills mm-hmm. that help them fight back. You know, um, that's when, you know, Pickens and I talked about Friday the 13th, part seven, where Tina is uh, telekinetic. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I always like it when when uh, the the uh, stalkers become the stalker. Yeah, and that's the stalked yeah. becomes the stalker. And that's what she yeah. like basically does in part three is she teaches how the other characters how to fight back too. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I was a little upset with Friday the Thirteenth Seven that Seven that in order for her to be able to beat Jason, she has to have these like supernatural powers. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel like that takes away from the whole final girl aspect that, you know, she, I guess Jason, you you can argue, argue is supernatural. Yes. So it was just kind of, you know, making the playing ground a little even, but there's just something about it where I'm just not cool with that. She has to have these supernatural powers in order to, uh, beat him well, that's a great point that because is. nancy essentially uses her brain and her brain alone mm-hmm. um although she has a major bear hug i think to be able to drag freddie out uh from her dream <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you know i i 
I would say, I can't remember exactly how I came to love A Nightmare on Elm Street or Freddy. I know that he was um, ever-present in my childhood. I mean, there were even... uh, there is there were even these nine hundred numbers where you could call and talk to Freddie on the phone. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Shut the Do you remember seeing door. commercials for that? Yeah, it was like two ninety nine a minute just yeah. to talk to him, and it was a pre pre recorded message of him just saying his one liners. Yeah, you That's could you, instead of phone sex, people would call and talk to <laughs> Freddie on the phone and just rack up this crazy phone bill. Mm-hmm. But, um, that's how ever present it was, and those commercials were kind of on mainstream TV. Maybe, maybe cable he was, television. He was definitely a mainstream icon. Like he, um, I, I know. J- was he on a talk? I know Jason was on talk shows. Jason was on a talk show for I, sure. Was he on a talk? I feel like Freddie should have been on like on I, one of the talk I, shows. I, well, there's also the scene in New Nightmare where he's on a yeah. talk show. And didn't he have a cartoon <laughs> show, like a cartoon character show? They like made an animated series. I don't remember yeah. that, but I do know that a lot of people have played with Scooby Doo and they've put Freddy and Jason in Scooby Doo mm-hmm. art. So I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But um, but I will say that in terms of franchises, in terms of the horror villain, uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street is my favorite, and I think what it really accomplishes better than anything else I've seen is it does have this very dreamlike, very artistically dreams. Even the bad ones are good in terms of the uh, the claymation, the stop the stop uh, motion. Uh, the, anim- puppets, the puppets, especially <laughs> part five. Oh, oh, my you know, God. all of that, it, it does become a very genuine kind of nightmare. Um, so even in the ones that are not as successful as the others, um, I just think all in all, it's a solid franchise. I think, I really do think all of them, except for Freddy's Dead, I think are like watchable. Like there's something I can find in everyone to like. And I think they're the most consistent out of all, like when a Halloween movie is bad, it's bad. Same with Friday the 13th. (laughs) It's bad when it's bad. Nightmare on Elm Street is pretty consistent except for Freddy's Dead, which is just kind of nosedives a little bit in my opinion. Freddy's Freddy Dead got like a, a, got pretty silly. Yeah, it just got too goofy, thing. especially the power. The, now you're playing with power. Yeah. <laughs> Although yeah. I do remember going to see that in theaters with my girlfriend at the time, Ooh. Lynn Lynn Carpenter. Um, was it? In- you only D? dated her because her last name was Carpenter. Admit it. <laughs> <laughs> um, flat as a board and needs a screw. screw. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was in 3D, yes, Michelle. Uh, okay. it, it, that was a major selling point for me. And it was pretty fun in 3D, definitely. The oh, the, yeah. s- the setback is that it was only like maybe a quarter of the movie was in 3D. Oh, yeah, it was like the, like, the, like, the last 20 minutes. Yeah, it, it was. Oh, there was like a lot of 3D. 10 minutes. I don't even think it was that much yeah. of it. Yeah, there was some sort of signal, and it said on it, and it, and it was printed on the, on the 3D glasses when you're supposed to put them on. I think it's when he puts on his glasses or mm-hmm. something it like was, that. They have to put on these special glasses. Yeah. It was when Maggie puts on her mm-hmm. her glasses. That's when you did it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, I even enjoyed that one, but it could be because it was 3D. I was on a date and, you know. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? So tell us more about um, Freddy's Nightmares. So why why did you and Dave decide to, to specialize in something that is kind of Freddy tangential? Well, there are. There are many podcasts that are dedicated to talking about horror and specifically horror films. And so they're generally going to cover Nightmare on Elm Street, the whole franchise. And it's not that we wanted to be different. We just wanted to talk about something that really hadn't been talked about before. And we were presented with the idea of doing Freddy's Nightmares by the a network that I'm with mm-hmm. and we kind of were a little apprehensive about it because the only way that you can watch Freddy's nightmares is if you have bootleg copies. <laughs> so that basically our audience was not only cut in half. I mean, so that, that half was cut in, in half. So we were basically dealing with maybe less than a fourth of the horror population that would actually um, know what, what the show was. So, um, but we decided to do it anyway, because we're not too concerned about how many people listen or, you know, how many downloads we get. We just we're having a lot of fun talking about it. And we've been friends for over 20 years now. And we've always just been like horror friends. So talking about horror 
movies and, and shows. But by doing this podcast, we're getting to know each other a lot better because we're talking about re- relatable stories. Um, so it, it's been a lot of fun getting to know an old friend, but getting to know him better, you know? Oh, definitely. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, we're not we're not blowing anything out of the water with our, with our numbers, but I think it's just a really fun, oh, creative yeah. outlet for us. And, yeah. you know, if a, if a few people li- listen or a few they thousand like people it. listen, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. awesome. <laughs> you know, there you go. But there's yeah. there's worse things that we all could be doing with our time, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> 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 then speaking into the void. Um, from uh, Freddy's Nightmares, do you have a favorite episode that you would recommend to us uh, to watch if we can bootleg it all? Um, well, you, you can bootleg it from a website called dailymotion.com. Or, quite, a um, fan, so quite a fan of dailymotion. <laughs> okay, yeah, so they're, they're all on there. Or, um, you can find them on eBay. Um, they're listed on there as well. But so far, my favorite episode has probably been, it's the third one from season one, and it has Lori Petty in it. Mm. Um, and she's, uh, uh, and she's in high school and she's this track star and she's, um, having all these like weird daydreams that, um, are Freddie get involved. And, yeah. um, yeah, so I think so far that's been the, my most favorite one. And I recently watched, we haven't talked about it yet though. I recently watched the one that has Brad Pitt in it. Oh, I've and, heard about this one. And apparently he's yeah. awful. See, I don't think he's all that bad in it. The 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 script itself, as for most of the episodes, really isn't all that strong. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't have a lot of great material to work with, and he is still kind of green in in his acting. But um, yeah, he isn't he isn't terrible. He's much better now as an yeah, actor. I can't but, comment on it because I haven't seen it. That's just what I've heard is that he's bad. But it's probably like the people that saw like Cutting Class too, where he like. He's probably just the script wasn't amazing, so they probably yeah. Like, yeah, here you go. <laughs> and I know you've discussed this on the show, but um, any theories why we can't get our hands on this in a Blu-ray um, or or anything like that? You know, I honestly don't know. Um, I I don't understand where there would be any like copyright problems, like if they used music or something to where they'd have to pay more money for. I just think that Warner Brothers isn't interested in putting money into the nightmare universe. And for whatever reason, they just are skipping out on it. I, I honestly have no idea. Apparently because New Line I, what would buy it. Yeah, I think so. I was going to say, I heard that New Line is actually working on a, a reboot remake. Um, oh, another one? Yeah, release. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if, if that happens, maybe it would be a good opportunity to... It, My thing is, if they've released the Friday the 13th TV series on DVD, they should release the Friday mm-hmm. series. Like, come yeah. on. Well, now, yeah. Friday the 13th, that has a, a lot more episodes that ran longer. So it could be that maybe it didn't run long enough to warrant a, a, mm-hmm. a release. I don't know. I don't know, but well, I feel like it would be cheaper because it would be less DVDs to produce. Yeah. Yeah, I heard a long time ago that uh, DVDs will only be released if there are 50 episodes in the whole series. But I find that hard to believe because there are many DVD TV series that are or TV series that are on DVD that are less than 50 episodes. So, yeah, I honestly have no idea if yeah. it would be interesting to find out like why they won't do it. But maybe we don't Maybe we we need to be one of those the, those those nerds that petition it. Start a petition. I'm, Start a petition. I'm down for it. I'm you know yeah. for it all. Exactly. You know, like the Slumber Party Massacre dude, right? Oh yeah, he yeah. like got the whole like Blu-ray release <laughs> essentially just by creating a website. One person can, can <laughs> make a difference. Can indeed. Besides Freddy Krueger, do you, like what other horror movies or like franchises or anything that you're into? Um, I'm into the Scream series. I didn't care for the TV show. I watched like the first season yeah. and I, right. Um, I'm I'm basically like a, a 80s and 90s horror fan. Um, the stuff that's coming out now, I'm not into like a ghost or supernatural kind of villain. Um, so I'm I like the the slasher flicks. Hmm. Have you seen any new uh, slasher movies that lived up to your expectations? 
I really liked your next. Yes. That is I amazing. was surprised by how much I liked that. Well, and also, uh, we have a final girl who like Nancy. I mean, it makes sense yeah. that you would like yeah, that. She's and that all of us would like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. That, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. So how can people find syndicated nightmares? We are on all the podcasting networks. Um, so if you go to the podcast and just search syndicated nightmares, you will find it. Um, I think we're the only one that has a name close to that. So um, you will definitely be able to find us. Yes, and I Googled uh, Googled uh-huh. you, and you're all over Google, too, so really. Oh, good. Yes, okay. yes, yes. We have a um, an Instagram account, and then there's a Twitter account of just my horror brand, Fearopoly, um, Ooh, which just has, like, my random stuff that I do. I, I make films and um, make little crafts and everything, so that's just kind of my umbrella of what I I produce under. Well, tell us more about Fearopoly. That's also your Twitter handle, right? Yes. 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 It um, it's just I don't I don't really want to call it a company because it's just me. So, um, it's just the this company name that I I use for anything horror that I I put out. Um, I make short films with my friends and I write and, and direct it, and um, it's just the name that I I came up with. It was going to be horroropoly Mm -hmm. and i like i got a website for it and everything and then when i was going through it the website domain suggested fearopoly and i was like oh i like that better so i have to it (laughs) yeah it rolls off the tongue a bit Mm -hmm. better than than it does yeah Yeah. well so can we find these movies on youtube or yes they are on on youtube under um fearopoly films there's a Final Girls parody film. It's a it's a parody of Friday the Thirteenth, and it's about um, it's about ten minutes long, and it's about two lesbians who happen to be the final girl. They're being chased by Jason, and since there's two lesbians, but there can only be one final girl, they have to sort out how, who's going to be the final girl. Oh, I cannot wait to I see that. We're definitely watching that. Okay, cool. Oh my gosh, no, that sounds yes. amazing. Speaking of Final Girls, uh, next week, uh, Michelle will be joining us, uh, where she will be attempting to win the title of Final Girl in a game of trivia against our slasher on A Nightmare on Elm Street. Part numero uno. Yeah, the OG, the original. Mm-hmm. And if you want to watch Michelle's movie that she just mentioned, uh, look at our show notes. It's going to be there, and it is so much fun. I checked it out. Um, Special thanks to Zalatan for our intro and outro music. It's called Tim's Nightmare. Thanks also to Ethan Messina Studio for our beautiful artwork for our podcast. If you're interested in being a final girl, just go to cocktailpartymassacre.com slash contact. And you can also follow us on uh, Twitter at CPM Horror Pod and on both Instagram and Facebook at Cocktail Party Massacre. Be sure also, if you're liking what you're listening to, to rate, review, subscribe, and share with like-minded people who love horror, having fun, and trivia. All right, and as always, eat shit and die rock. Eat shit and live, pickings. 